see some synergy blinding light with rupture and uh, mana leak okay that's kind of a cool concept and stuff but i wasn't sure if they're really going to overwhelmingly take team fights against og but with this morphling now, now we don't necessarily have to right we don't have to end this game by 25 minutes we don't have to just overwhelm og and make sure that we win all these team fights and take these objectives because morphling gives us ideally the better late game they have the heroes to be able to show in like three different lanes at the same time. Yeah. That's the scary part, I think. Once it gets to the mid game, you're going to have a Morphling one lane, Puck another lane, Sand King or Coddle in another lane. And sure, you have pick, for sure. But can you kill them all? Can you get Ana to that critical mass fast enough? Can you get that 30 minute six slot that you're looking for and just go down mid and make it so that IG is, is forced to react? That's, that's going to be the true question. I want to point to that man right there, No Tail. Uh, I feel like he has been sort of linchpin for every single one of OG strategies of late. I think that um, that if you looked at OG, especially this last year, like the every single their, one of their strategies usually felt like it put pressure on the enemy just by existing. That's why oftentimes you saw these like the, the alchemist lineups that they were always running, the Naga Sirens. It, it, they picked up this hero that solely by being in the game put pressure on the enemy team kind of saying, hey, tick-tock, tick-tock, later this game's going, we're going to get to this hero to its peak, and you have to run into us. And No-Tail would always be that, that, or usually would be, that safe lane, very active core that would draw a lot of attention away from, from the enemy, away from that one hero that's kind of farming up, which is usually Anna's. And, and sometimes that would be like, uh, I think, Terrorblade. You know, great example, they ran a lot of safe lane Terrorblade where No-Tail would take that hero and be more active than anybody else that we've ever seen with that hero. He would go, he would push, try and push the off lane tower as quick as he could. If he couldn't do that against whatever off lane hero he was facing, he would rotate pretty early and he would go into the enemy safe lane and take that tower away. He would just draw attention away from the mid lane, allow Anna to be able to find the farm, to be able to come that mid to late game carry that they, they really need. And, and it seems like this is still kind of the same premise in their strategies, um, just different heroes, right? So now we're seeing Necroposes. We saw that one Pugna game, even if that didn't go great for no It wasn't great. Right, it, it was still the same idea, right? It's a hero that draws a lot of attention from the enemy just due to its nature. And I think Necropos is, is particularly good at that, right? Because he's self-sufficient in lane, he gets a lot of farm, and you know he's gonna ball out of control unless you address him. And he's gonna be, you know, getting aggressive and he's gonna be in these team fights and stuff. So you're naturally gonna try and focus him and that will ideally open a lot of space for Anna's Alchemist to uh, get the full 20K Alchemist that's unstoppable before anyone hits 10K. That's the, the genuine hope, right? But I think a lot of emphasis is going to be put on this mid lane. Bloodseeker in a game where you have the heroes of capability of harassment, right? Like mm -hmm. that, that's the big thing. How much benefit can you get out of this thirst in the mid lane? Because Bloodseeker is notorious for being able to win pretty much all matchups. If you have your side lanes going well, you're going to win your lane. And you're not going to be able to get harassed out. You start with the poor man shield, as OP already has here. And he's going to be able to pretty much walk down that lane get free farm, he gets the the start that he wants. There is potential for IG to even apply pressure to this lineup of OG in the early stages of the game. So as you said, and very aptly so, is about how much room can they create for not just Ana, but even the other heroes like JRX and S4, they both want blinks. Yeah. Like these heroes in conjunction, they, they do need quite a bit of farm, but I think that's why it necessitated picking up a hero like Necrophos, that hero who could just be the one who exists in the lane and doesn't need support help, and Jerax and uh, Jerax and um, Fly can do pretty much whatever they want. You know, I'm kind of concerned that OG don't have enough wave clear. I think IG like they have overwhelming amount. They've got Puck insta kill creep waves. They've got Sand King later on. He also does that. Morphling's obviously going to be doing some you know standard split pushing Morphling things. Uh, and then you've got Keeper the Light as well. You can insta kill creep wave. So you've got three kind of supporting heroes that all are able to farm really quickly through lanes. And then a Morphling who just does split pushing things. I'm concerned that their lanes are going to be pushed in so much, they're not going to be able to do a lot of this lane maintenance because Oracle, Slardar, and Batrider really don't excel at that sort of thing. And that, that will definitely close off the map quite a bit in its own right uh, for OG. I, yeah, that, that's the one thing, too, that we talked about the whole 30-minute Alchemist wants to win the game, more yep. or less. There's, I guess, a couple of Aghanims he can give out, like Batrider and Necro are probably the two best that come to mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that Oracle has one too, you don't really see it so much. Yeah, but, that's um, not great. 
I think the Necrophos one is probably priority number one, but after that point, you're kind of... You're looking at a team that's more or less hit its peak, I feel. And then if the game keeps stretching out past that point, IG are going to go right back into the driver's seat with the, the Morphling and the, the Ultra Late. Sure, you're always going to have your Necrophos Reaper Scythe to fall back on, but I think that this game is going to be... Like, the drafts, for me, are both very even. They just have different points in the game and, and when they're the strongest. And I think that IG might have a little bit more time in the game where their lineup feels better than what OG have. But OG's window is super strong. Yeah. Like, if they can get it, it's very hard to stop. What do you think, uh, going back to the Reaper's site, we had this Morphling picked up last pick. Great against Alchemist. One of the best carries to counterpick an Alchemist. But what about this Morphling versus so the Necrophos? What about the fact that he makes himself, you know, supposed to be so tanky, but we've got this sort of percentage-based damage coming out from Reaper's Scythe. Is that a concern for IG? I think it has to be, given how many ways they have to break Lincolns, especially. Like, eventually, Blink Batrider, you have Slardar. Oracle is actually very good at breaking Lincolns as well. Purifying Flames has great range. So if, if you're not paying attention, you can certainly get caught off guard, no question. It's just a matter of, you know, how the fights go, how good Burning's farm is comparatively to... The, the other core is on OG. And I mean, there, there's a lot of, I guess, uh, a lot of thinking you can do about it. But really what, what matters the most is how are the lanes going to go? How much pressure do OG want to apply? How long does it take them to get their blinks? Yeah. Because those things are all extremely important to OG hitting their timing. Because it's, as much as it is about Ana getting the farm, it's also about the heroes getting items necessary to create that space. Right. I think one of the things that like, IG, in these team fights, Morphling should never be the one hit by a Reaper's Scythe, right? Because they've got so many, they've got initiation from both Puck and the Sand King, and they've got the Bloodseeker on the front lines. Morphling's going to be kind of like the last one heading into right. a team fight, right? So, oftentimes, I think that Reaper's Scythe just uh, won't be held on to long enough to be able to threaten the Morphling, in team fights anyway. We'll see uh, OG, Jax is going to poke his head out into the IG side, see if uh, he can build possibly can test that body room, but uh, doesn't look like it. Bobica. So four position with boots first. He's going to do that play where he tries to catch the mid laner after he picks up the bounty room, but there's no mid laner actually there. It's just S4, so Bobica's just going to book it straight towards the bounty room and take it away. So OG will actually only get one bounty of this whole entire thing, but it's the Alchemist bounty room, so that kind of makes up for it. That's, yeah, it's definitely value. I yeah. think you can you can justify. <laughs> They're up in net worth. That's a win, you right? You can justify missing your block for that, I think. Yeah. Especially if Jarax wants to start by being a little bit annoying in the mid lane. Looks like he's just scouting things out for the time being. Yeah, how do these uh, supports play with the mid lane? Do you think there's more emphasis on OG to have their four positions hit against the Bloodseeker? Because it is a problem, right? OP just gets free harassment on Ana all day long because he knows he can always heal up afterwards. Yeah, this rage. this one v one is definitely not Alk favored. You look at uh, other heroes like Ursa, for example, who are really good melees against Alk. Bloodseeker is is up there on that list as well. Yeah. So I think it's tough though because if Jerax walks over there, what is he really going to accomplish as well? Like how much harassment can he really do with just boots first? I think that this is probably the the biggest issue that. OG are going to run into is how do they deal with Bloodseeker? They managed to get a stun here in top lane. S4 is going to hit the blast. Morphling's still ready to go. He actually has his nuke picked up rather than the waveform. And uh, will manage to get a bit more onto S4. But this is all good, right? Even if they don't hit him, which he is going to be able to dodge that one. They've gotten him low enough that the Bloodseeker, he just charges forward at Jerex. He's got all the extra movement speed and damage. This is the, one of the best things. Sometimes not killing a hero is actually so much favorable for the Bloodseeker lineup, just because Bloodseeker gets a huge laning phase advantage at that point. Not just that, but there's no shrines until five minutes. So yeah. S4 is going to be sitting up here waiting to slowly tango his way back into being able to lane. And you can see middle OP is just like aggressively posturing here against both heroes. Dual lane me? Think I care? For what? For what? He just runs at him. So Jarex is going to hope for the two-minute rune. It was actually regen down at bottom. Uh, now that Jarex is away, XXS can feel a little bit more comfortable as the Puck here at bottom. Uh, it's not a particularly dangerous matchup that he's dealing with. Necrophos and uh, Oracle, there really is no kill potential. So our Puck should do all right. Uh, oh, he still he got it? That whole time, Jarex was, like, running at him, and he still ends up getting credit for the first blood. But yeah. Sending the Courier back in, knowing that the Sand King was there. It's very strange. So 
OG to pick up the first blood, but comes at a very hefty cost, especially since Anna. Oh and no, oh. don't tell me! OP's just gonna run at him! Oh god! Anna does a little loop de loop around the tower, and OP will give up on that chase. He doesn't want to drop too low. Because the worst thing he could possibly do is Bloodseeker is be a little bit low, Blood Rage, and try and go for CS, and all of a sudden die to a gank. So he just needs some CS. Heal back up in the full. That's why Jerex is here on the front lines trying to make sure that OP doesn't get any of that heal off. Now, this is one of the most effective ways to deal with the Bloodseeker once he starts losing HP. But you can see OP, he just does a huge amount of damage. It's very hard to like deny him unless you can threaten to kill. That's uh, something that Alchemist certainly suffers at. Not a whole lot of uh, kill setup for your supports. They're they, they just come in and stun and you have acid spray. That's yeah, they're, they're doing a good job, though, of making sure, like, Anna knew that his lane was going to be rough, so, like, he immediately rushed Iron Town, and earlier on, Jerex pulled enemy creeps into the jungle, so Anna could continue to kill that wave and the, the jungle creeps simultaneously. So he's, he's still getting a, a good chunk of CS, even though a lot of it is neutrals, and I think that's what's important, like, staying relevant. And during the time he's sitting in the jungle and going back to base and whatnot, Jerex is still able to soak some EXP of his own in mid. S4 is pretty happy with himself. Uh, they've been trying to pull quite a bit, and he's been contesting that pull and is actually sitting at level 4. Good amount of CS, too. 17 and 0, considering some of that is uh, some big neutral creeps. Pretty good for our offlane bat rider. In comparison to XXS's Puck, which Jarver talked about how there's, this is not a lane that he's going to have a lot of kill potential uh, directed towards him, just uh, harassing him really for the next. I'm surprised he's having such a hard time staying in EXP range. Like, S4 is almost a full level ahead of him. I guess, you know, S4 always has the jungle potential and he can kill the camps, but I figure that XXS would be able to stay a little bit closer to the, the waves. No Tail has gotten a few denies in there as well. Helps, but Jesus. Uh, look at our Bloodseekers now. Oh yeah, this is classic Bloodseeker. XXS. Tries to contest a little bit of the pull there. He's managed to get away. Silence onto No Tail, but No Tail's level 5 with the level 3 death pull. He regens and heals up very quickly. You see us. Same exact thing as a Bloodseeker, right? Like, you can you can kind of harass him and stuff, but it doesn't matter as if, if he gets uh, any real CS. It's so like you've got to have a lot of uh, middle lane. Kill potential. Fly, he is definitely dead. He goes for the long ensnare onto OP, but. Within melee range, it doesn't really matter. So OP using his first rupture to get a kill on mid lane and threaten that mid tier one tower. That's one of the things that I think Bloodseeker is criminally underrated for, is that he not just wins his lane, but he does so much physical damage, he's actually great at hitting towers too. In the early game, if you have this much of an advantage, yeah, you can just walk up there. Both of the supports of OG were kind of forced mid, and sure, you, you end up losing the, the Oracle to a rupture, but the more important thing again is just what Anna can do in the meantime. He's going for the armlet now. He's got the soul ring. Almost six. And then, the, you know, S4 is still getting a, a fair chunk of EXP as well. So they, they have two heroes doing well. And then you look at the side of IG and the Bloodseeker is, is crushing it. He's, he's doing very well in his lane. And then Burning is getting his own free farm. So both teams getting what I think they need out of this early game. Yeah, it's definitely IG not running away with a serious net worth lead just yet. Uh, burning also is uh, doing well enough in his lane that he's beginning to pressure the offlane tower. So we already kind of talked about how wave clear is going to be able to present a lot of opportunities for IG to control the map, but these early tower losses could be a real hurtful bottom lane. They're going to try and go for no-tail here. XXS jumps away before the Reaper Scythe could go down on him. Bobica's quite low, and he will manage to get the Reaper Scythe, but it's not enough to finish up Bobica. Bobica's actually turning around. What a man, Bobica! He managed to get the kill on no-tail after surviving through the Reaper Scythe. Oh man, that was so close. I didn't actually know if he was in range to get the Reaper, but committing really hard there, getting punished. It's a little unfortunate getting that, like that particular hero dying. You, you kind of want him to be the stability of your team, you know? Rupture on Anna mid here. With the silence and the new coming in, Anna's just going to have to TP away. He actually TPs up to t what, top? Uh-oh. That's not a great place to be because there's no shrine, and he uh -oh. actually still has... Uh, Vision, OP is, is loving all this low HP. Miscommunication, maybe? Maybe he thought the shrine was up. Yeah. Or maybe he thought he wasn't going to take so much damage so he can go and jump. He out. has ulti now. He should be all right. Yeah. 
As a result, OP is going to run back in the lane real quickly and get some more damage onto that tier one. Bobica trying to threaten fly, but Jarex is here. He's able to sprint run him down. Now, Anna does not have unstable concoction. So again, no real kill potential here. Bobica could have just burrow struck over the cliff and felt truly threatened. Uh, XXS has actually left his lane to come sit behind this mid tower. They really want to take this tier one nice and early before the alchemist gets big enough to defend it by himself. They also have the coil at the ready, so you're not going to be able to TP out from another rupture this time. They're going to be able to jump onto the Alchemist here with a Morphling and Bulbaka. Jarex is here to be able to get the stun, fakes it out, and manages to get it after the waveform. Anna's sitting inside the trees, but he will be ruptured up. The silence is going to go down as well, and Anna will end up dying to that one. OP with all the extra movement speed is going to try and go for Jarex here. Stun goes down. Fly. He is actually going to be He's the one so in some fast. trouble. He actually has Fortune Sand on cooldown. It doesn't oh. have the disarm, so he won't be able to stop OP. Back over to S4, the Batrider. Yeah, OP's just going to go ahead and TP. He's not going to risk getting caught by S4 here. It's, it would be too big of a loss. They are going to be able to take that mid-tower because of that, though. Burning will gladly take it as the Morphling. I love the movement across the map of IG. Just recognizing how strong OP is in comparison to what Anna can really offer to his team right now. It's only eight minutes in. You yep. saw a Morphling invading the enemy jungle at eight minutes. And they just recognize, hey, these heroes, they need Blink Daggers, they need farm, they need their ultimates. Like S4 is level seven, but he doesn't have Lasso yet. So they're just able to walk in, punish extremely hard, get a very important tower, and get their aggressive vision down all at the same time. That was one thing that, that OG, when they ran this, uh, this Alchemist lineup, they always put a lot of attention to protecting their mid tower and protecting their off lane tower even because it keeps the off lane jungle super safe for you and also keeps both sets of ancients really available which is what the alchemists get a feed off of uh, later on into the game. But here, Invictus Gaming, because of those rotations you talked about, just funneling into that middle lane and knowing they have the superior power, take that big objective away, and it just unlocks a lot of the areas that Alchemist is going to be farming. Now those areas are going to be a lot more susceptible to rotations from Invictus Gaming. And they're not done yet, either. They're, they're making their way. Okay, OP could be in trouble here. Oh, yeah. Kind of dancing around, but OP is the one who's going to be chased down by the Firefly Jerex and S4 will manage to run him down. That's a big, big kill. Especially for S4s. As they desperately needed him to, to come online early. I like that really jumps choice. Not that that's uh, anything special. But it really helps to have this bat, bat Rider just be kind of like a tanky Metis that can fight you underneath towers. Now, Bobica is just being the space creator right now. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Bobica, what's, he, what's his plan here? He goes up to the cliff straight to S4, so... Thought maybe he would burrow strike the uh, slaughter and try and go for a TP out. But such luck. They do manage to get a glyph uh, here on the top lane, preventing the Morphling from taking that tower. They'll get a deny on it instead. Morphling's actually keeping the bottom lane spotted out by S4. S4 is going to go ahead and stop that TP. Lasso pulls him back. And, uh, well, with that much sticky napalm, he can get a little bit more damage on the burning. Not enough to threaten to kill, but it does force a couple of rotations. So that's actually good enough for S4. He's Sure he's pretty happy with that. OG are in a decent position this time because they, they have heroes in the lane to be able to, to push if they want to. Looks like they're just going to end up leaving No Tail, one of the harder heroes to take down, while IG are, are counter pressuring the safe lane of OG. Jerex is not leaving Bobica alone. Bobica's trying to be that four position that kind of moves around and stuff, but that's the thing. There are bigger, badder four position supports out there than Sankey, right? Oh, There's yeah. Night Stalker, Slardar, I think, is much better, especially now that he's got his level six. He's such a huge level advantage over poor Bobica that uh, he does not stand up well at all in that 1v1. Uh, this is a great hero of being able to just be a nuisance. And, and knowing that Sanking is so prevalent in the meta right now, is it, it's a perfect hero to counter him because you can't rely on things like Sandstorm to just get your, you know, you, you don't have a get out of jail free card anymore. Yeah. Look at Jax running all the way behind the tier two just to try and get a corrosive haze down. Meanwhile, S4 thanks them for the stack. They are going to be able to catch Jarex though as uh, Sprint and Silence. It's going to finish him off, but it costs them two different cores as well as support all being in that defensive area. And that's perfect for Anna. He feels very confident farming out mid right now getting closer and closer to his relic. Space created, as they say. That's yeah. exactly what you want if you're OG. I think Fly and Jarex are the, the two heroes on the team right now that probably care the least about dying at this point. I mean, look at the... They had to go into their own jungle and commit two ultimates to kill a Slardar. Like, that... I, 
that to me, I'm looking at it and I'm, I'm going, all right, cool. My Alchemist almost has his Relic. He's sitting atop the net worth now, 1,500 ahead of OP, when OP was crushing the lane. Now, if you're IG, you just had a lot of space created for that Alchemist. What are you thinking as you're Invictus Gaming? Do you want to just try and take some more objectives, maybe take some early Tier 2s? Where the Alchemist comes online, they're going to go for Fly here, meant to get the silence onto Oracle. It was only level 5 anyway, but OP is in deep, and he does have the Amplify damage, plus no Tails here with Reaper Scythe. This is a very dead Blood Seeker with some extra Death Timer on the clock. So, IG once again overstep their bounds. It caught in the process. This uh, over-aggression from them is really costing the early lead they bought themselves in the laning phase. I feel like they're very concerned about not really being able to, to deal with Ana past like the first, you know, five to eight minutes where OP had a clear laning advantage. After that kind of broke down and they invaded the jungle one time and they killed him, past that point they haven't really done much. And killing an Alchemist one or two times is great, but you've got to do more. Now. They managed to get a Silence Coil, plus the pull in there. Q brought in Bulbaka for the extra stun, and it was definitely needed. If he had gotten that Chemical Rage off, ooh, nice Blinding Light pushback before Jarex get the stun onto Q. That'll be the end of that. But it is an Alchemist who already has his Relic, so at this point, Radiance is just inevitable in the next few minutes. Yeah. The, the timing for OG is a little bit different than what IG can do, because IG can take the game a little bit later. And they can say, all right, we got our Morphling to fall back on. Burning's still farming pretty well. He's a little bit below OP's net worth at the moment, but, you know, he's getting what he needs. Yeah. The the real concern comes if they cannot de-push the lanes fast enough on the side of IG, because I feel like they're going to be forced into that kind of split push play. Ooh, Courier. Oh, Derek is going to go for it. Oh, Miss Burrow Strike almost gets it. And is he actually going to be able to team oh out of this one? They didn't have Coil. Oh, God. no, that's a baseball moment. Yeah, Bobaka <laughs> missed the Burrow. It's unfortunate. Oh. Bobo, no. Yeah, but like you were talking about during the draft, the whole split push potential of IG, I think that's going to have to come into play here at some point. Because yeah. if they're walking down lanes with like three or four heroes and they're not finding much success, then you need to make sure that the lanes are constantly pushed out because eventually this Alchemist is going to be massive and you have to make sure that you can pressure somewhere else on the map instead of having to fight him head on because you don't really have what I would call direct hero counters to him right now. Bobaka. Goes and takes the bounty rune away from S4. Once again, a little bit of deja vu to our very first bounty rune. No Tail has picked himself up a pipe. Uh, was actually thinking about going to Hand of Midas before completing the pipe, but he wants that early team fight item now. It's I super can, value. Yeah, I could kind of feel him against this puck. First damage that's available there. I think it's, it's a really nice item progression because the pipe in of itself makes you feel crazy tanky. And the weakest point, I think, for Necrophos, if you're worried about dying, is either getting purged when you have your Ghost Shroud on, or just getting bursted by magical damage when you have the Ghost Shroud on. And this kind of solves pretty much both of those issues. Uh, smoke up here from IG. Look at a head down to bottom lane, see if they can catch No Tail. Uh oh, they may be too late. The orb is going to reveal the last second. The coil! Half a second too late. That would have been such a huge kill, but now OG. Have managed. They brought No Tail into the mid lane, so they're in a good position to see if they can actually kind of put some pressure on this mid tower with fresh radiance of the alchemist plus that pipe. They're gonna find Burning here. Jarex is actually gonna be ruptured up. Burning does have the stun to be able to stop that one. Tries to get out of the silence, but he's not gonna make it far. As uh, the pipe actually allows him to survive long enough to be able to get off the stun. The Reaper Scythe cuts down the Blood Seeker. That's two down from Invictus Gaming, making a third. They've snatched up the Morphling and pulled him back to his doom. 8-8, eight eight, 16 minutes in, and all of a sudden, OG are in full swing. That's what we call a debate right there, folks. <laughs> that was a very nice follow-up. The, the points into Unstable Concoction coming in huge there. The damage output, just when the Radiance Burn is there, you're fighting into potentially an Acid Spray as well as the Necrophos. Having the early pipe, keeping Jerax alive long enough to get that kind of counter-initiation, that is... That's exactly what you want if you're OG. They're walking straight into Roshan. They know that there, you know, there's no coil right now. Bloodseeker's dead still for 20. They have the minus armor to be able to do this. And he's just dead for so long with that added respawn time. He would be up right now and could TP in and see if he could get a silence off. But added respawn time gives OG so much extra to work with. All IG can do, well, you can see what XXS is doing. He's trying to push down bottom and see if he can get as much damage on the tier two while OG was roaching. Yeah, we'll get to see that one more time as well. 
the uh, whole team fight. Look, look at how long that Jerax lasts. He gets the stun off because he has the presence of mind to walk out of the blood rate, knowing that he's going to get stunned by burning. Yeah. He just wants to make sure he can get that one extra spell. And the bonus kill coming in from the lasso, courtesy of S4. That results in the Roshan here for OG. Very impressive early game coming out from them, given how scary OP looked in the very beginning of the game. They'll get another denied tower, Jerex. Dude, look at Anna's net worth. Here. Oh my lord. Yeah, it's beginning to get out of control. It was like three minutes ago where he was only like 1,500 ahead. Now he's 5,000 almost ahead. He's going to go the full Manta Octarine build to a fresh Naga Siren. And, I mean, again, fortunately, IG do have a lot of wave clear, but they're going to need every little bit they can against uh, this form of Alchemist. My goodness. That is... Probably one of the like the fastest net worth climbs I've ever seen. Escort jumps in, and keep key from the light, and they waste no time whatsoever. Bringing him down, they'll use the reaper scythe again. Just the added respawn time just gives them a lot of space to take objectives. This is one of those games where I think you just kind of casually throw out the reaper whenever, because you know that one hero down, IG are going to feel tentative to defend anything. I mean, Anna is still not really even the one pressuring the map. He's kind of just chilling in his own jungle, farming. His team is creating all that space for him. And S4 already having the blink and the drums available means their pickoff potential is now online. This is the stage where IG are, are trying to think, okay, do we go for the split push strat now? Because our, our puck just bought a Midas too, a couple of minutes ago. XXS picked that up after his own blink deck. And I think that means that they're, they're looking to gear up for more of this kind of slow, methodical game instead of trying to fight. They just can't afford pickoffs, and one of these heroes, Bulbaka, is going to be susceptible to OG's pick. It loses a lot of that blink dagger gold, which they really need. Because uh, if they are, because they can't just let OG take all the objectives, right? They do have to stand and fight at some point, or maybe go for a five-man smoke gank or something like that. And if they want to be able to win that kind of engagement, they need a harder initiation than just the pucks blink and coil. They need a solid stun. I think that's where the rupture comes in, and eventually, you know, the, the Blink and the Burrow Epicenter coming in from the Sand King. The issue right now is, you know, Bobaka is still a, quite a ways away from his own Blink Dagger, about 800. And OP, he doesn't really have a backup plan because he opted not to get Midas. So because he doesn't have a Midas and he went for the SNY, I think the itemization kind of forces them into this awkward spot of you kind of want to fight, but OG's team fight just seems to be a little bit better until the Blink Dagger on the Sand King comes out. Jarek's pushed away. GG out. Burning will take Q's place. Pushing out that bottom lane. He is being more on the shotgun. Has to go Scepter, but it's mid lane where Bulbaka's going to get caught once again. Oh, God. This is feeling like that Earthshaker game we watched earlier, Draskal. The Reaper Scythe, fortunately, will not kill him. So he won't have that extra long death timer. Uh, top lane, they're also trying to go for XXS here now. That orb is going to be able to follow him. Phase Shift doesn't actually get it out. And he just gets I don't think you can phase shift Fortune's End. Uh, like, you can do it when it's in the air, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But you, well, once it hits, I think it counts as a root. Yeah, it does. Man, that actually sucks so bad. <laughs> he had to dodge it, and then he would have been just hit by an unstable concoction after the phase shift. So That's rough. Oh, OG. Seemingly unstoppable here in the first 15, 20 minutes or so on this game one. Now, Burning in the meantime, he's doing what he can. He's pushing bottom. He's almost got the E-Blade. Only about 1,500 away. That'll be a really big shift in power, I think. They're able to get a quick pick on anyone. Doesn't even matter who it is. Just, you know, turn the fight into a 4v5. Yeah. That's really what you're looking for. Either kill someone so fast the Oracle isn't able to save them in time, or maybe just kill the Oracle himself in the back lines. Jump to your replicate to safety. But in the meantime, OP, there's a ward there, so he's going to be caught by the unstable concoction. Anna just runs straight at him. He wants some vengeance for all that nasty laning phase, and he gives him the walk away. He doesn't even stay around for the extra right click he gives him. You're going to die to ask the brain rating. Dude, he knew. Turn my back to you. How's he it feel, the whole time. How's it feel? Now, this is getting out of control very, very quickly. The net worth lead is pretty much the entirety of Anna's net worth. Like, that's where OG have their advantage. 19,000 net worth in a 22 minute game. Complete insanity. Uh, click back of Bulbaka, he's the same gold sitting in his bank. 
that he was like five minutes ago. He's been getting focused a lot though. Like yeah, he's been he really getting has. chased around by Jerex. You know, S4 has lassoed him. He's gotten reapered. Like, yeah, it's just like that that Hellraiser's game where we were talking about Milan's or Shaker and how they were uh, how they were always willing to use the the Void Chronosphere just to lock down the Earth Shaker because keep that Blink Dagger, babe. Not much is gonna happen. Burning the attempted to go on him, but Lincoln's did protect him long enough for him to jump to his replicate. And that will mean get out the Ethereal Blade before the next high ground push. Oh, Jarex. Ruptured up. Silence is going to walk away from that one, though. His team is there to protect him. He's got those Tranquil Boots, man. They didn't even break. Oh, nice pickup here. They're going to be able to grab OP, drag him far, far away. His Q pushed him even farther that, away I was going to say, that blinding light actually <laughs> helped them. All right, let's see Seeker's really not making it home. Bonus for Seth. There is an Aghanims up on this Keeper of the Light. I know we haven't really talked about Q so much, but you know, pushing into the high ground with the Alchemist having this many items normally is very hard to stop, but they, they do have a tremendous amount of wave clear between the Puck and the, the Keeper of the Light with the Blast. Yeah, it seems like there there's no way for them to push high ground in this nighttime. Next but Roche, maybe. Have to do yeah, next Roche, they could probably do it. But they do have the pipe and the sustain of Death Pulse. That might be enough to kind of tip the scales to where OG can, can feasibly kill the Tier 3. And once that happens, you know, you open up the shrines and the rich get richer, as they say. That is Alchemist's motto. Exactly. It's going to pick up an Octarine soon. That means more Manta Illusions out a whole lot sooner. Or Jesus. He might oh, actually even get be away. Dead. Yeah. He's going to oh. blink back down. He has the shrine up, oh, but the nuke from Fly. Hello. Nice catch there. I think the Purifying Flames range catches a lot of people off guard. And it is actually huge. It's 15 to 8 with a 10,000 gold lead for OG. But this is an Alchemist lineup, so it can't be deceptive. So we turn towards the experience where you see a real lead 7,500. OG. Even if you say, but Alchemist, mid lane, what's happening there? Jesus. Okay, S4, I'm not sure how he ended up there, but they might be able to kill OP. The Reaper Sight is enough. He's trying to get back, back, back. The Unstable Concoction's coming in. He throws out the Silence, actually goes for the stun onto Sand King to stop the Epicenter. That's quick thinking from Anna, even if it means he misses out on the kill from OP. While the Morphling's replicate of the Alchemist is being beaten down, but they're actually going to shrine up. I'm sorry, I replicate. Not going to be able to save from that one. They push him back a little bit deeper into the base. Underneath that tier 3 tower, they do use that false promise. So he's going to be staying alive a little bit longer, though, but he doesn't really have a target for his unstable concoction. He's going to stun himself again right outside that tier 3, and he doesn't even heal that much. He's going to be pushed back even further. They desperately need this kill. It's going to be worth so much. He's trying to armlet toggle his way out of this one. Fly saving him from all that magic damage. A lot of stun from Jarek's air. He turns, and he managed to kill one. He's going to go for burning up next. Sweet, sweet vengeance for Anna. He goes for more. Burning's going to be able to get back to the base, but they've already killed two of IG. And what seemed the ultimate disaster scenario from OG losing their Alchemist, losing their 23,000 net worth hero would have been a huge windfall for Invictus Gaming, but they're denied that much. Fly God, just Fates Edict, False Promise, another Fates Edict. All the damage that they were trying to do to him, they couldn't burst him because no one can hit spells. He's sitting in the base with no ultimate. Another lasso comes out here. Oh, take me away, you! He's gonna be dragged back, Anna. Again, focusing on his own replicate. He's just not going to let that opposing illusion survive. And Invictus Gaming are going to be forced to use a buyback on the Keeper of the Light just to make sure that OG can't continue to push high ground during this daytime. I think OG are going to be more than happy. Like, look at this cap. Just how tanky he is. Gets the False Promise after the Burrow. He throws out the Fate Seed. It gets a couple of heals going. And Fly's positioning during this fight was just immaculate. Going back, chasing him out of the base. Jarex in a position to get a counter stun a little bit later on. It was absolute flawless play here from OG. I thought for sure right there, that burrow strike. But there was so much heal coming out from Fly at that period of time. Three-man stun, courtesy yeah. of your Slardar player. That was just, that was a treat to watch. Very, very well played from OG. But at the same time, IG showed that, you know, they have the damage. They can, they can take him down if OG aren't ready. And emboldened by that knowledge, they're going to go for a four-man smoke up, push through mid lane. See if they can find somebody. They're going to run into an invis. Matt Ryder, he jumps away. A little bit scared, just in case they had sentries. You never know. And, uh, 
that is going to be a smoke failure for Invictus Gaming. But what does OT do with this? They're kind of been waiting for Roshan. They see it's going to be up now. And with the Cross of Haze, they could really make short work of them. It's going to drop extremely fast. I think the the next point where Anna's going to feel maybe almost indestructible for a little while is after, of course, the Lincolns and maybe if he gets another armor item. I think that's really the way that they can burst him. Now that he has the Octor and he has so much raw health that the E-Blade combination with Bates Edict, it doesn't really seem like it's enough. Yeah. So the right click is where he has to itemize next after this uh, potential Roshan attempt here. Both teams kind of hovering in the area. IG looking for a better position. Yeah, they're going to do the full wrap up into the Shrine area. Hope that no one's there. And then once they see no one is there, they this can is ring around the Rosie the right now. Yeah, they're, they're going to try to get the opposing high ground, but OG have the same exact idea. They're going to go into the Dire Shrine. They're going to do the wrap route as well. Are they going to be able to catch him? Where's this fight actually going to end up, oh, Drasko? They I don't know. They Rabbit know. Rabbit, they go. They see it now. Invictus Gaming, they're going to turn. The smoke's going to pop onto Anna. He's the frontline hero. Can they actually blow him up, though? It's going to be super tough. They throw up the silence. They already have a Vault Thomas ready to go on to Anna Protector. So Burning starts going for the back line. He tries to attack Fly, trying to take him on, but he's actually taking so much damage from Reaper's Sight. He has to start backing himself away. They've lost their Sand King already. IG in full retreat will not be losing more than just their support. So fortunately, their cores stay alive, but OG win yet another team fight. The reveal of the Lincolns. OP tried to throw out the rupture straight away, but he couldn't get it because they didn't click on Anna fast enough. You know, when they heated the moment, they saw the smoke reveal and they're like, we need to go. This hero's in the front line. Unfortunately, Fly was in the back. Immediate false promise during the chemical rage. So much regeneration. You just cannot deal enough damage to kill this alchemist. And now they're going to be able to get Aegis. Jeez. And that's so much work. Especially with a hero like Necrophos. He probably takes... He's probably one of the best heroes with cheese, right? You've got maybe yeah. Storm Spirit, who's really good, obviously, but just the fact that this is a taint, like, like this is a hero that wants to kind of be on the front lines, but ha now has this huge amount of turnaround potential with the cheese, as well as the Reaper Scythe. Haste. This is getting to be crunch time here for IG. What can they do? You know, can they push out the lanes fast enough? We can already see, you know, XXS is in the top lane. Burning's kind of running around with the Z-Blade, seeing if he can find something as well. You can feel the sense of urgency right now that IG has. What? We need to buy time. Why did, why did that happen? Let's when did that, that happen? <laughs> They're like sitting right on top of each other inside of the base. Yeah, I just see them flying by each other. I mean, why not? I guess if you have a hero on your team that gets items so fast that he has to use the courier all the time, I mean, there was, want. The, there was that time the courier died. Do you think they bought a courier to replace it for that three minutes? Uh, honestly, I would crazy. I would have to watch the replay, Cat. I cannot confirm or deny. 20 to 9, 17,000 gold lead, and OG are going high ground during night time, so the Keeper of the Light is not at that full. They do I like this combination, though. They're giving Blood Rage onto Q. I had noticed that. So his blast is doing a little bit more, but OG are so damn tanky, they just don't seem to care. And it's down to half HP, but he's got Aegis. They're going to try and get an aggressive force snap forward underneath the tier fours, but they really have to target someone else in this, and that's why they go for the rupture on the back line. Sheriff's going to be hit by that one, but he just can't get to that hero to threaten anybody. In fact, he's going to be asked for with the initiation. As Gore takes an ethereal blade shotgun to the face, but it doesn't matter. He's down to half HP. Jesus Christ! Wow. Our Morphle just got popped! OP is going to come in with his BKB, but I don't think it matters at all. This is just a suicide move, and IG will call it. This series, we talked about how important it was for either one of these teams to take the 2-0 against the other to really give themselves some solid, I would say, cushion to be able to land in that